Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at three clips taken from Rod Parsley's 2022 prayer cloth service. Now, if you find yourself asking, what in the world is a prayer cloth service? Consider yourself blessed that you don't know the answer to that. But to give you a quick explanation, basically, this is when people send their prayer requests into Rod Parsley. He is then going to take a prayer cloth, he's going to pray over it and touch it, and then send it back to you, and that is supposed to give you the answer that you need for that prayer request. So we're going to look at the three clips, and then after each clip, we'll come back, we'll open up the Bible, see what the Bible says to see if these teachings are biblical, and I will offer some commentary along the way. But before we get to that, hello friends, my name is Matt, welcome to my channel. If you could please take a second to subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it, and it helps me in my efforts to get good Christian content out to people on YouTube. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump into our first clip. This first clip is actually not of Rod Parsley. This is during, I guess, the prelude or the, the warm-up for the service. So it's three people from the church uh, getting people hyped up and ready for the service. Yes. But not only that, for all of you that have a family member, a loved one, a friend, a classmate that's yes. battling any type of addiction, mm, yes. get your prayer request in yes. now. We have a prayer cloth waiting for you on the altar yes. that Pastor Rod is going to lay his hands on. You yes. will receive your miracle today. Yes. Yes. Amen. The yes. anointing, Robert, Pastor, teaches us that it's tangible yes. and yes. it's transferable. transferable. This is just a point of contact. Yes. Yes. And so we're, we're going to put our hands yes. Yes, sir. on these prayer cloths today, attach it to the need, yes. send it back to you, the people, and we know that this is going to be a shockwave yeah. of, of miracles. All right, two comments that I want to look at from that first clip. Let's start with the woman who was speaking at first, and I'm going to say the woman and the man, not to be disrespectful. I, I legitimately don't know the names of these people. So the woman who was speaking at first, she said, quote, you will receive your miracle today. So she said, if you send in your prayer request, you will most definitively receive the miracle that you need. Friends, do you think that she is able to guarantee that every person who needs a miracle is going to get it today? Does she have that sort of power? Do you think there's ever been a person who has sent in a prayer request to Ron Parsley's ministry who has never had their prayer answered? I would venture to say yes. If every single person who needed a miracle and sent a prayer request into Rod Parsley received that miracle, all of us would have heard about it from now. So this woman is straight up lying when she says that to people. And I believe she knows that she's lying when she says that. She knows that not every person is going to receive their miracle. Then we moved on to the man. Again, I don't know his name. But the man said, the anointing is tangible and transferable. And so this is why, this is the, the rationale that they use to host this sort of prayer cloth service. It's that Rod Parsley has this special anointing. And, and so much of this movement is caught up in the anointing and they make it this huge deal. And so Rod Parsley is the man of God who has the anointing and he can transfer that anointing to you when he touches this prayer cloth. Well, friends, let's look at what the Bible has to say about the anointing. So we'll start in 1 John chapter 2. We'll look at verses 26 and 27. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. So it seems like some people might try to deceive you concerning the anointing. Verse 27. But the anointing that you received from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. So do you notice that if you are a Christian, the anointing abides in you. You have the anointing. It's not some exterior thing out there that somebody else has that they can transfer to you. No, the anointing abides in you because it is the Holy Spirit. In fact, we see that. In 2 Corinthians chapter, is it chapter 1 or chapter 2? Chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. It says, And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us, already anointed, and who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Friends, there is nothing in scripture about people having this special anointing that is tangible and transferable and somebody can lay hands on something and now they're transferring that anointing to you. Friends, if you are a Christian, 
there is already an anointing inside of you because you have the Holy Spirit. And so all these made up teachings and uh, I don't actually know if Rod Parsley said it in this service because I'm looking, it's, it's almost three hours long, so I didn't watch the entire thing. But typically in this sort of movement, there's a big deal made about the anointing and it's the anointing is what brings your financial breakthrough. The anointing is what brings your healing, yada, yada, yada. And so it's a big deal. I have to get this anointing. So now you see they're hyping you up to believe Rod Parsley is the man of God who's going to transfer his anointing, which is just a major false teaching. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get into our second clip. And this is going to be our first one with Pastor Rod Parsley. So Cornelius, he, he was an Italian cat. And, and, and he was a centurion. And he prayed. Your Bible said he was a devout man who prayed and gave. And God said that built a memorial regarding Cornelius in heaven. So God would remember him. So today we're going to do the same thing. We're going to, we're going to give, we're going to sow financially our tithe, 10% of the sanctified gross income, and an offering anything above a tithe. So as you sow today, you sow and bless in the name of a prophet, you release that prophet's reward. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you believing for a miracle? Are you believing for a deliverance? Are you believing for a healing? Do you have a prayer cloth on this table? Are you listening to me right there where you are? Mix your praying and your giving and build a memorial in the eyes of God. All right, so Rod Parsley using the story of Cornelius found in the book of Acts to say that we need to be people who ask and give. And so, of course, now he's going to lead people in to them giving their tithe. I don't know if you've heard this before or not, friends, but the tithe is not a New Testament concept. The tithe is something that was used by the Old Testament theocracy of Israel to provide funds for the function of the temple. In the New Testament, we are not required to give a tithe, which he said, I believe he said, was 10% of your sanctified gross income. Whatever that means, okay, we're not required to do that. In fact, let's look at what the New Testament has to say about giving. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. It says, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I've seen a couple of times where someone like myself will speak out about the idea of you must give a tithe and you must sow your seed to give, and people will sometimes respond and say, we're supposed to be giving people. Absolutely. I mean, at the beginning of verse 7, it says each one must give. So we are supposed to be generous, but we are supposed to be giving out of a, a cheerful heart, with gratitude, with thanksgiving, so appreciative for what God has done for us that we desire to give. It's not supposed to be under compulsion. It's not supposed to be reluctantly. And there is certainly not a set amount that I am required to give. So Rod Parsley is off when he is telling people you must give 10% of your income. That is not a New Testament biblical concept. He also then went on from there. He said, this is a quote of his, when you sow in the name of a prophet, you release that prophet's reward. When you sow in the name of a prophet, I, I mean, I have to believe he's insinuating that he is the prophet and you would sow in his name. I mean, I don't know who else he would be talking about there, but that is a, I would say a paraphrase of Matthew 10, but it's really a distortion of Matthew 10. If we go to Matthew 10 verse 41, this is Jesus speaking. He says, the one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. So in that verse, Jesus says, when you receive a prophet because he is a prophet, that's when you receive the prophet's reward. But when Rod Parsley talks about it, he says, when you sow in the name of a prophet, see, sowing is not found in that verse whatsoever. And it says, when you receive someone who is a prophet, I'm going to tell you right now, friends, Rod Parsley is not a prophet. He has many false prophecies and many dangerous false teachings. But do you see how he just very casually 
inserts the idea of sowing into that verse to get people to believe that it is biblical for them to give in this way. And ultimately, what this teaching is coming down to is he is telling people that they should give so that they can get something from God. You got to get that prophet's reward. And the reason that Cornelius was blessed was because he was a giver. And so you need to give because you need your breakthrough. You need your miracle, whatever it is, you name it, right? You need that thing. You need to give to God. Friends, this is honestly an attempt to manipulate God to get him to do whatever you want him to do. This is not giving generously and cheerfully and out of thanksgiving and expecting nothing in return. Listen, does God bless you when you give? He absolutely does. And I think that's a mistake, again, that people make. They think, you don't think God blesses you when you give. No, I do believe God blesses you when you give, but we don't know what that blessing looks like. We can't make it into a formula, and we are not supposed to be giving with the motivation of getting something in return. And listen, when we tie all of this together, remember the very beginning people are saying, listen, Rod Parsley, he's going to pray for you and you are going to receive your breakthrough. But if you want to receive that breakthrough, it's not enough just to send in your prayer request. No, you must sow a seed to come along with it. And I am taking this right off of Rod Parsley's website. And this page was about this service. It, it's talking about if you miss this service, this is what you need to do. Listen to what Rod Parsley or whoever wrote it, but a part of his ministry said, it says, request your anointed prayer cloth, and through this simple point of contact, you can experience miracles of physical healing, deliverance from addiction, depression or demonic oppression, restoration, financial breakthrough, and more. Well, who doesn't love that? I can get whatever I want. They're making a guarantee. Unfortunately, this is not biblical or true. It continues, as you mix your praying with your giving and sow a seed of faith today, Pastor Parsley wants to send you powerful teaching resources to prepare you and your loved ones for God's miracle release. So did you notice, what does it ultimately end up being? Send Rod Parsley money, get a miracle. He can't transfer this anointing to you. He can't guarantee you anything is going to happen, yet he is twisting God's word so that he can take money from the flock. Friends, Sometimes people ask, why are you out here doing discernment ministry? Why can't you just disagree silently? Why do you have to put people you know, on blast? I think that's what they call it. Friends, it's because he is literally deceiving and manipulating people to send him money so that he can get rich, so that he can take all of the money. This stuff is not biblical. Stay far away from him, please. All right, we have one more clip to get to. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we humbly come before your throne. We come in the power of agreement. We thank you for every person that has requested to be a part of this service across America and around the world. We lay our hands on these requests. We infuse them with the anointing of the Holy Spirit that they will become a point of contact for the release of devil destroying god exalting faith healing deliverance in the mighty name of jesus we break every curse we bind every devil we loose every captive we speak healing spirit soul body in all that pertains to life and godliness we declare your freedom we release you into victory this very day for the glory of God, for the increase of his kingdom. And there you have it, guys. It's just more unbiblical stuff. You'll notice the emotionally manipulative music in the background. Rod Parsley talking about infusing the anointing as he touches things, which we've already uh, discussed as being horrifically unbiblical. Then he starts talking about more unbiblical things, such as Binding Satan. I've done an entire video on that here on my YouTube channel. He talks about um, releasing people as though he has the ability to do it, breaking curses. That's not something that's biblical. Friend, every curse has already been broken by Jesus. It's not something that you need to do. So this is just emotional manipulation, twisting scriptures again, and, and using it at the end of the day to get people to sow a seed so that they can get their breakthrough. One of the things that I really try to do, guys, is to um, notice that there is a sliding scale, so to speak, in terms of how bad some of these teachers are. So you have the 
absolute heretics who are complete charlatans and they need to be called out. And then you have people that I, I disagree with and I would not recommend, but I'm not going to go so far as to call them a false teacher. With this one, I have been much more stern because this man is very clearly twisting God's word to get people to send him money. And this is awful, guys. There are serious consequences for this. Some people think like, oh, does it really matter that he doesn't preach correctly? Yes, it matters when people are sending sometimes the last dollar that they have. They're sending all their money to this man because they expect that they're going to get a prayer cloth that is going to bring a miracle. Maybe they have someone with stage four cancer and they're they're asking God, God, please heal this person. And they think that if they send $1,000 to Rod Parsley, that their loved one's going to be healed. And then when it doesn't happen, not only have they given $1,000 to someone who can't handle God's word correctly, um, and, and now they're out $1,000, they have the pain of having to deal with the fact that they were told that God was going to answer this, and now God has not answered this. And so what are they left to think? They're left to think that God doesn't care for them. I mean, guys, it it's really, really, really problematic, and I hope that you see that. If you've been listening to Rod Parsley's ministry following his teaching, friend, you need to stop. This man, I mean, he's not just oh, kind of bad sometimes. He is awful. He has some very blasphemous teachings. I already have a couple of videos dealing with him on my channel. I encourage you to search for them and check them out. But he is uh, he is a dangerous, dangerous man and someone that we must not follow and uh, partner together with in ministry. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this is helpful. If it has been helpful to you, if you would please consider subscribing to my channel, I greatly appreciate it and it will help to get this content out to more people on YouTube. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching and until next time, God bless.